It's back for a teacher. We're back at it again. With another The Aftermath of Compton University after NCAA 25. If you guys are new, man, subscribe notification. If you're new, if you guys did not go check out last episode, go check that out. Link is in the description. In which, this is the current situation. After Jason Jenkins had his meeting with the NCAA board talking about the possible return of Compton University, they told him to wait a little while. They'll they'll give him inf- when they they give, they'll call him when they have information about whether Compton will be reinstated or not. That's where we left off. We're fast forward eight months later. The year is twenty twenty four, and it's a couple of weeks before the nat. It's a it's a couple of days before the national championship between Washington and Michigan. Jason gets a call from the NCAA. The NCAA told Jason that they have made a decision with the voting being an 85 to 15% differential in favor of Compton University being reinstated. Yes, for the 2024 and 2025 season, Compton University will be coming back to the college football world. And the whole sports world blew up all day, all week. Even during the National Championship, which was when Compton made their announcement that they were officially coming back, the whole sports world went crazy and to a point where ESPN were were posting old Compton games on YouTube. A lot of old broadcasting stations, even the NFL Network, was playing old Compton games. For the, just, just for some of these young youngies to understand how dominant Compton was. Now, Jason knew he had to address the elephant in the room and that was... Who was going to be the head coach, the players, and recruiting, and, of course, the quarterback. But first, who was going to be the head coach? Now, immediately when he thought about this, Nipsey Lamar automatically called him, and he told him, he said, what time should I arrive on campus? That's That was the entire discussion. A couple hours later, Nipsey is in Compton at the university getting Welcomed with open arms, filled with cheers, and everyone loved the fact that Nipsey was back and he was the head coach. A lot of fans loved that too because a lot of people loved the Nipsey's coaching style. A lot of these coaches nowadays was inspired off of Nipsey's coaching style. Now, on to the players. Of course, they're going to have some walk-ons, but they heard some rumors, some intel from some old friends that... Some of their sons don't like their current situations or, well, also that some of their sons might flip and come to Compton. The sons are, well, the names are going to sound familiar to you guys. So the moment Jason heard the news, he told them, send them them over. We're going to need as much help as we can get rebuilding this program. The moment they heard about that and Compton coming back, they decided, you know what, we're in. So the players that are making the return and the players, the first we're going to break it down to two things. The transfer players first and the freshman recruits that will be coming this fall to come playing for Compton, which are transfer transfer players. Five stars, strong safety, Hunter Tate, previous school was the University of Florida. Five star wide receiver, Javante Adams, previous school was Ohio State. Four-star cornerback, Custy Hitchcock, previous school, Miami. Four-star guard, David Chandler, previous school, Oklahoma. Four-star, Raymond Gregg, previous school, Alabama. Three-star, Bobby Gordon, linebacker Bobby Gordon, previous school, Georgia Tech. And three-star wide receiver, Justin Sweeney, previous school was Oregon. Now, the freshman recruits. Five-star player, free safety, Sean Taylor Jr., State, Florida. Five-star wide receiver, Axel Fulton, State, Florida. Five-star athlete, Kirkdick Fulton, State, Florida. Four-star running back, J.J. Ortiz, State, California. Four-star cornerback, Joey Vunk, State, Pennsylvania. And three-star athlete, Jerome Bradford, State, Nevada. Now, like I said, these names sound familiar to you guys because you guys have heard of their dads. Well, we got, well, your guys' ears and eyes don't deceive you. They are the sons of former Compton and Toronto players. In which, like, in which these guys, these group of guys, all know each other growing up, but mainly in particular, Hunter Tate, Javante Adams, Custy Hitchcock, 
Sean Taylor Jr., the Fulton twins. Yes, Lehigh Fulton. Lehigh Fulton had twins. J.J. Ortiz. They were the squad. And Joey Vaughn. They were the people who were very, very, the most close to each other. And they all played ball. Some of these players played ball together on the same on the same state going up against each other. For example, Sean Taylor Jr. and Travis Tate took on the Fulton Twins in a classic, one of the greatest Florida high school games that year. And one of the greatest high school games that year. But Sean Taylor, like I said, Sean Taylor Jr. and Travis and Hunter Tate both played the same positions as their dads. They both of them were in that secondary together, being the most feared safety duo in the entire nation. So the fact that they're coming back and they're gonna be a unit once again and Hunter is only a year older than Sean. That was the only difference. A year. A, a year difference. The Fulton Twins, they dominated Florida and they did their thing. Javante Adams had his opportunity in Ohio State, but he never really got any playing time. So when they heard about Confident University coming back, a school that they were familiar with, a school that they used to hang out with, the, that was their, like, for the summer, they used to go there. Like, when it was, every time Compton University had a spring game, their dads will literally take them out of school and drive or fly them out to Compton for them to go watch them watch that performance. And also, they've been to multiple Super Bowls together as a group, and they've been to multiple national championships as a group. They've seen their dads be in their primes, ball out in person, and they love nothing more but to go to Compton because they're familiar with Nipsey. Nipsey always, Nipsey always saw the potential. In all of these guys, all the guys that I've mentioned for freshmen and transfer players, Nipsey always told them that he would love to have them on their team for recruitment because he saw the potential and he saw how they were all throughout the years. They were progressively getting better. They saw how they was for the Pee Wee football team, how they were at one point. They were national champions of Pee Wee football. I shit you not. The players that you've seen on the screen all together. Were Pee Wee football champions for the whole nation. They dominated. Just like their just like their fathers, they dominated. They did their own thing. And they went up against each other in high school and all that. That's when you know, you know, when high high school happens, some of your friends from middle school and elementary school, either they separate or you guys will still be cool, but don't really talk that much. But that's basically what it was. But for Hunter T, Javante Adams, Sean Taylor Jr. and the Fulton Twins and JJ Ortiz, they all stood close to each other. They all kept in contact with each other. After the you know, after you know they went their separate ways for high school. Now, Jason and Nipsey realize that they have one problem, one major problem for this team is who's going to be the quarterback. They have the star power, they have the potential star power, but who's going to be the quarterback of the team? They could go for a walk on. They could go for a walk on. They could go for. Someone in a transfer portal and all that, they could. But all of them gave each other a look. And even the recruits gave a suggestion to Nipsey and Jason that they were all considering. They were all considering one man, one player, who they thought would be the perfect, and I mean the perfect fit to not only this offense, but this entire program. And I'm going to announce that this person will be the new main character of this entire universe. Remember how for Toronto and Compton back in Madden 06, Donovan Rose was the main character? This player will be the same. As he is the son of the greatest athlete of all time, not just in the NFL, no, genuinely the greatest athlete of all time in all of sports you can name any sport they will never fill what his father did which is donovan rose yes if you guys thought the reign of terror of donovan rose was ending it was far far from over the moment he decided to bring his offspring jackson rose the new main character and the most important piece and important character in this entire series. They will not be a much more important character or player like Jackson 
Jackson has not yet made his decision. That's the crazy part about this. He hasn't made his choice yet. No one knows where he's going. No one knows what school he's going to. He hasn't made his choice yet. So next episode, I will talk about the full story of Jackson Rose and him making his decision. He could mess around and not go to Compton. He could go somewhere else. He's getting offers from all over the place. But Jackson Rose, in a lot of people's eyes, is under a lot of pressure. So if you guys are new, man, subscribe, and I will explain tomorrow the full story of Jackson Rose. Will he commit to Compton? Will he not? Guys, new man, subscribe. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.